Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Centerville State of the City Address. Let me start off by saying the state of the city is strong. Let me say that one more time. The state of the city of Centerville is strong. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. I was, I was hoping there was one in the crowd that we would get that out of here. We have a lot of people to thank for that status. First, I would like to thank my fellow council members, Russ Kosky, Steve King, Darren Moser, who's here with us today, as well as our newest council member, Ray Taylor, who's up front here. We'd also like to thank junior council member Rowan Shaw. And since we're discussing the past year, I need to thank former council member Michelle Laxo, as well as last year's junior council member Danny Peterson. We have a wonderful staff who show up every day to display tremendous dedication to the cause of making Centerville one of the best cities in the state of Minnesota. Administrator Mark Stotts, Assistant Administrator Athanasia Lewis, City Clerk Teresa Bender, Finance Director Bruce DeJong, hopefully I said that right, Senior Account Clerk Chris Sweeney, Public Works Director Paul Paulzer, Public Works Technicians Ted Peterson, Dan Schmitz, and James Heisinga. I would also like to thank the members of EDA, Park and Rec, as well as Planning and Zoning for all of their time, energy, and effort they put into planning and executing those plans. We are blessed to have the Lions Club who are integrated into the fabric of who we are here in the city of Centerville. Thank you to each one of them for raising their hands to serve. Finally, we have many other volunteers as well as past mayors and elected officials whose shoulders we stand on today. We wouldn't be where we are in 2023 without them. I've had the great privilege to travel around the state as well as many other locations within our country. I've spoken with many city officials, cities both large and small, and each time I've walked away from those conversations feeling very proud, excited, and thankful for the city of Centerville. We are uniquely positioned to prosper in the present, yet grow in the future. We have a history steeped in tradition and values with a future of bountiful possibilities. We are uniquely Centerville. Now, what many of you don't know is we have biweekly meetings as a city council, but we also attend work sessions as well as a yearly retreat. At this retreat, we try to get to know one another a little bit better, so a little touchy-feely stuff. But then we also strive to think strategically, to have a big picture view of what's going on out there in the world. And these retreats allow us to do that. They allow us to relax, but they are open to the public. So if anyone wants to come and sit in the back of the room, we won't take any comments from you, but you can listen. At the 2022 retreat though, which was facilitated by my wife, Susan Love, back in the back of the room, we formulated a two-year strategic plan with three areas of focus, economic development, organizational resilience, and community building. There are a lot of priorities and drivers in each one of these areas that allow us to measure our success or the lack thereof. But know for sure, when we have successes, it was not an accident. It was on purpose. The talk of developing and redeveloping our downtown stretches back nearly two decades. As you can see on the slide, thank you. <laughs> I forgot to give you cues, apologize. <laughs> It was included in our 2006 comprehensive plan. Of course, the world has gone through a couple of changes since then, but needless to say, the plan did not go away. But honestly, we used to pull out this four by four, five by five piece of cardboard into the city council chambers anytime downtown development came up. And someone may have inkled or hinted, someone that that thing should stay tucked away, that maybe it was past its time. But our EDA is now working on a plan with a consulting firm to understand the feasibility of that same plan to see if it's 
you know, if it still fits us or if we need to change things moving forward into 2023 and beyond. We still believe there's opportunity in our downtown to become more robust and vibrant than it is today. The city has a direct impact with the development of Block 7, as well as partnering with Kelly's Corner in a way to help them develop Block 5. We know the presence of a small town feel remains important, but I believe it's time to update that, that comment. I don't know if it's a small town feel anymore. I think it's a hometown feel. I think that we've shown that we can think big and we can grow while remaining in our limited borders. We're only 2.5 miles, so we, we're forced to be small. We have no other choice. So let's shift gears a little bit and look back over the last 12 months. We celebrated a number of openings and ribbon cuttings. Norbella Senior Living Center opened on the northeast end of town. They're a beautiful facility with 40 units focusing on memory care and assisted living. Atlas Villas is another fantastic looking memory care facility right on our main street. And they are gearing up to hire staff and open in the near future. Of course, Quick Trip jumped on the scene as the new year dawned. Their CEO joined us for the grand opening and they were gracious enough to donate funds to our police department and our parks department. Centerville Storage opened their doors during the short sleeve weather. We got to get to that slide. It was, it was warm out, which is not today. I wouldn't wear short sleeves. There we go. Short sleeve weather. That's what I was talking about. And they're great neighbors. I might happen to know a neighbor or two of theirs, so I can tell you things have been good so far. Sutton Transport is a great looking facility over on the southeast side of town near our public works. The facility is impressive, and though they open quietly, they are still valued. First Choice Builders is a new business which allows me to talk a little bit about one of our programs offered by the EDA to assist businesses alike. Our center stage program helped new businesses with a little video vignette as well as social media and local newspaper advertising. And I couldn't help but say thank you to Wise Guys for catering this event for us today. They don't normally make breakfast, so I haven't had a chance to eat yet, but I hope it was really good for everyone. Mm -hmm. No one's upset about it, so thank you, wise guys. And you know what? During the pandemic, as I circle back to the center stage project, a lot of our businesses took advantage of that project and have done well and stayed in business as a result. I'm aware of a little boutique across the street from City Hall. And they're a new business. They don't have a sign up yet, but we hope to get them some business going. And it, it offers a new shopping opportunity. And it's a spouse of a Centerville young man who grew up here and wanted to move back home. So him and his wife moved back from California and have now opened that business up. And we're looking forward to having them be successful in our city. All right, American Roofing Supply took over the, for, the former Northern Forest Products building, as well as the vacant lot next door to them. With all of the new homes in the area, I'm sure they'll be busy for the foreseeable future. Other new buildings coming in the future include Max Storage, a 16 unit facility, which is located on Fairview or will be located on Fairview, catering to small businesses like food trucks that need to travel but don't need a storefront. And of course, who, who could not see the Amazon Fulfillment Center, which will bring 600 new jobs into our city and become its largest employer. The new facility will help drive our economic engine for years to come. We recently signed a purchase agreement with Guys and Dolls. I said it this right this time. I couldn't say it on the city council meeting for some reason. Um, they're gonna build on the main street right near our school. And we have some interest in a possible hotel and restaurant on the northeast corner of town, north of Norbella. And we continue the purchase agreement. We continue to talk about development on blocks five and block seven, as I mentioned before. All right, Centerville is part of the Centennial School District. So I have my school district friends here today. And we are very proud to be a part of them. We have one of the top school districts in the state. And it's a major reason that many of the younger families moved to Centerville and moved to the area to be part of that school district. 
Centerville Elementary is within the Centennial School District, and they recently Ah, oh, we got them. There we go. They recently completed some renovations, which added more light, vibrancy, classroom space, storm shelters, as well as new playground equipment in the last year. I had an opportunity, if I can find my notes here, I had an opportunity to visit the second grade classes at the elementary school as they were working on civics and wanted to learn a little bit more about local government. I think they taught me more than I taught them, but that's okay, I went anyway. And I have to say, I'm, I'm impressed with those young, the young kids in that school. They figured out how old I was. You know, first they asked me, and I said, no, I don't need to tell you that. Then they started asking me complex word questions like, what school did you go to? You went to college, right? You know, how long ago were you in college? How old are your kids? And the next thing I know, they start yelling out my age. And I thought, wow, we have some future detective and investigators on our hands. Pretty impressive. I couldn't figure out word problems in second grade. As we dream of warmer days ahead, though, I can just hear the music in the air from our music in the parks. I can smell the food from our Main Street Market. Or maybe it's wise, guys. I don't know. I smell something. I can hear the roar of the crowd cheering on the water ski show. And of course, I can imagine the fabulous time had by our citizens during the week of Fet the Locks. Each year, our Fet the Locks committee gets together and creates experiences that are new, unique, and different. And I'm looking forward to Fet the Locks 2023. Earlier this week, I've told some of you, I had a chance to go to Washington, D.C. and visit with some of our legislatures. During that visit, I focused on public safety. That was my part of the talk. I talked about helping to rebuild the role of police officer into one that little kids dreamed about again. And parents encouraged those kids to participate in the noble profession that it is. I spoke about needing them to help us with mental health costs, as well as helping small communities like ours hire staff and stay staffed appropriately. We are proud of our police department. The service and protection that they provide us and help maintain a presence in our community is a model for other police departments around the metro area. I often talk to other city officials about the partnership that we share in our police department with surrounding cities to build a department which meets the needs of our community. Thank you to Circle Pines and Lexington for their partnership. Thank you Chief Mork and Captain Aldrich for your leadership. We are proud of Corporal John Kruger, who celebrated 25 years on the service of service on the force and is a member of our Planning and Zoning Commission. We are also proud of Officer Katie Mannon because she is no longer Officer Katie Mannon, she is now a detective. Katie Manning. We continue to hire new officers who are focused on leaving a situation better than it was when they arrived. Obviously, I stole that from someone else. I didn't make it up. <laughs> I haven't seen any of the officers turn down the opportunity to drive one of the new hybrid vehicles either. So I'm not sure if one's out here or not, but they like driving them. Council member Darren Moser and myself serve on the board with elected officials from our sister cities. Of course, we can't talk about public safety without mentioning Centennial Fire. We are 1.5 years into a relationship with Spring Lake Park, Blaine, and Milesview, known as SBM. This has been a great relationship as their chief serves as our chief and handles our administration. Centennial firefighters, though, still respond to fires and incidents within our district and having Battalion Chief Matt Montaigne, who is a former council member right here in our community, is a comforting feeling when you drive by and see the vehicle sitting in his driveway. We continue to evaluate ways of handling increased costs of equipment, as well as recruitment of new members. Council members Russ Koski and Steve King represent our city on this board with the city officials from Circle Pines. I also want to celebrate our city's fiscal responsibility. Our current debt will be paid off by 2029. Man, it just feels so good to say. <laughs> we, we restructured, and Bruce is in the back of the room, some of our investments to take advantage of rising interest rates 
and we have set up our bonds to have steady decreases over the coming years. Our audits have remained clean and we have remained fiscally responsible with our budget. We are working hard to diversify our income with new businesses to offset the tax burdens from homeowners by making Centerville a desired place to be. Okay, for years, we have dreamed of a new city hall or an updated city hall at least, and an updated website. Well, I don't know about we, I know I did for a long time, and I can tell you honestly, I don't know if I ever thought we'd actually get there. But here we sit in 2023, and we have both. We launched our new website in October, and at the suggestion of our junior council member, I brag about this all the time, Danny Peterson, it was accompanied by a new mobile app, which is launched in January. Public service announcement here, download the app. It's free, it's great, you can move around on it, navigate it really easy, and you have access to everything you need about the city. If anything is missing, I have here call us, but actually call it Anasia. She'll, <laughs> she'll help you out. All right, as part of the city hall update that I mentioned though, we have a history niche in the back of the council chambers. We put new displays in every six months in partnership with the Anoka County Historical Society. Our current offering is on veterans, is a veterans themed exhibit. Please stop by, feel free to take a look. We are so deeply grateful to our veterans who have served in the past as well as those who are currently serving. I mentioned our public works staff earlier in the presentation. What I didn't mention is they are looking for a few young people to join them for summer work. I can't promise the use of the tool cat. Maybe they'll let you. But I can promise a summer of hard work and learning a lot of life skills. My son did this job for two summers and learned a lot about our city. Maybe a little bit more than me, at least on the inner workings and sewers and all that stuff. All right. Did I mention that we had a junior council member program? I, I'm pretty proud of that one. Um, we are on year number two of that program, and it's been incredibly successful. I've shared information about this program with many cities and encouraged them to get over their fears of, oh my gosh, you know, it's another person to deal with, another voice in the council chambers, someone we have to have around. But I can tell you that each one of the young people that have served as our junior council member has been thoughtful, respectful, and willing to share their perspectives. I appreciate them making me look tall in these photos right here. So uh, that, that was pretty cool. All right, the next and final slide is another slide which is near and dear to me. Centerville Cares is somewhat simple yet innovative all at the same time. It is us as a city sharing resources and amenities which already exist for our citizens, which they may not be aware of. Things like rental assistance, food pantries, resources for mental health, care for the elderly, heat safety tips, and much, much more. We live in a very affluent community, but that doesn't mean there aren't citizens in need as well. We want to be a conduit to that assistance as we truly care about our fellow person and realize that we are truly stronger together. Of course, I had to squeeze that in. <laughs> As I look forward into the future of Centerville, I see a growing city with thriving businesses integrated as members of the city. I also see neighbors and people with pride in their homes and their community. I see a connected city with a hometown feel driven by citizens, driven by each one of you. Thank you and God bless. And if there are any questions whatsoever, I know there was something about ask the expert, but I believe I have the experts in the room with me, <laughs> but I definitely try to answer any question that anyone may have. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out. I hope you enjoyed the breakfast and get to know one another. And thank you once again. <laughs>